Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at how to fix any PC problem with this USB toolkit that I'm going to show you how to create yourself, which will have a load of cool tools and you'll be able to do date recovery, password resets and loads more. So let's take a look. So I've got a folder here on my desktop called WinPE, which I've created. And now we're going to head over to GitHub and download the Phoenix PE app so we can create our WinPE. So what is a WinPE? It's a pre-installed environment that allows you to boot to your WinPE to be able to boot into its own environment and do a bunch of different stuff like backup data, clone your drive, uh, malware removal, password recovery, file recovery, forensics, and other things like that. So first off, we need to download the requirements, which is the .NET 6.0 runtime. Uh, there is a link on their website. You just hit the download and download the version that you're using. Mine is X64. I've already installed this on my system, but you would need to download and install that uh, to make sure it works correctly. So let's go back to the Phoenix PE page here. Important, you are going to need the 7-zip application so it extracts the files properly, otherwise you will get an error. So let's go ahead and download this. I'm going to be downloading the 64-bit version. I already have this installed on my system, but you would need to download and install that just like I'm showing you here. Once you've got those both done, you're pretty much ready to download the Phoenix PE uh, application here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna choose this one here, which is the X64. We will need to extract this to its own folder. Now I do all of my work on a virtual machine, so I'll be using all of this on a virtual machine. So the next thing I like to do is to uh, make sure I turn off the antivirus program built into Windows. And the reason why I do that is because when you're working on projects like this, it can cause a bit of confliction and cause a problem and it will stop the project from running properly. So I just turn this off temporarily. It doesn't matter. We're in a virtual machine anyway. So I just turn all of this stuff off to make sure I don't have any sort of conflicts and issues like that. There is no malware in here, but that's what I do myself. So I'm in a virtual machine here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract all of the contents of the Phoenix PE uh, zip file here. So let's go ahead and we'll use 7-zip here to extract all of the contents of that uh, zip file. And that's now done. So you can see here that's done that. Now I could have extracted that to that WinPE folder and that's probably what I should have done there. But it doesn't matter. What I'll do is I'll quickly highlight all of this stuff and basically put it into that folder so you should have installed all of the software now and you should have extracted all of the contents here. So let me just quickly copy all of this stuff into the WinPE folder here. Otherwise, we're going to get confused. So I'll just cut and paste that into here. But if you extract it to your folder of your choice, you should be pretty much good to go from here. OK, so next up, let's open up uh, the program. I'm going to say yes to the user account control here. And this will open up the application. It should look something like this. So what we're going to do here now is uh, we're going to get our ISO. So you can choose Windows 10 or Windows 11, but I'm going to be using Windows 11 here. So let's go ahead and download our ISO from here. You can use one from Microsoft if you wish, but we'll need to download the ISO and extract it. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit download, and this will go ahead and open up a window here, and you will see uh, this little box pop up here. So we can now continue here and choose what we want to download. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. Click continue and we can also click continue here. And this will then start the process. Ask us our language we want to use and then click continue and that will start to download. There we go. So hit download for our architecture x64 and that will start coming down. Once we got that downloaded, we'll need to extract it. So let's go back to the application. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go back to our application and click on Extract Source ISO, choose your ISO, and then choose the folder you want to extract that ISO to. I'm just going to dump it into the WinPE folder here and select that one right here, and it will then start to extract all the contents inside there. So that's now done. Once that's completed, we can then continue with creating our WinPE. So let's go ahead now. I'm going to say yes here to configure uh, it as our source file. So let's go ahead and do that. 
and that should then take a bit of time to configure it. And now we're done. You should now see the source files and we should now see the base image and the install.wim, which is the WIMPE number six. That's what we're using right here. I'm going to run this uh, programs in RAM as well, which will be in the boot.wim. Now you have all your settings here. You just go through here. But first off, what I'm going to say is I'm just going to create a base setting before I start making loads of changes and get loads of errors because you will get the odd error if you start just check marking everything. So what I'm going to do is leave this as it is, leave the shell as is the core and the components uh, tweaks here. You can see the tweaks right here, wallpaper and things like that themes. I'm not going to get too heavy into that. Uh, but again, you can configure this in your own way that you like, but be prepared for the odd error message and you would have to reverse it and correct it. And I'll show you that in, in a second. But if you want to check mark uh, some of the applications before you start check marking all of them, I'm just going to do a couple here just to show you and we'll see what it actually does during the build process. So I want the password reset uh, tools here to be added. So I'll select the NTPW edit and I'll also check mark this Windows logon uh, unlocker. And we can also now go down to the next section, which is your drivers, your finalize. And also we can go into the media creation, which is to create the ISO after it's done all of our settings. So I'm going to leave this pretty much as is. You can see I've not made many changes to this system, just a few like the browser and things like that. It's going to go ahead. It will take a bit of time. But once it's done, you should see something that's been completed. Now, if you get an error code like this one, it means there is a problem. And this is to do with the browser, which was Firefox. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this off, this error here. It tells you the error and the warnings. One error, two warnings. I'm going to go back into the program itself. The program that was causing the problem was Mozilla Firefox. So I'm going to uncheck that and use Google Chrome and see whether we get any errors. So what I'm going to do is rerun the build again by clicking on the build button and go through that same process and see if we get a finished product without having any sort of errors. And you can see no warnings, no errors, and we've got a completed WinPE. So it's pretty basic at the moment, and we haven't added a vast amount of programs, but this is the way that you should do it. Do a little bit at a time, add a couple of programs, rebuild, until you get to a working WinPE that works with all the applications that you've got. If you're wondering where your ISO is stored, because I did have create ISO checkmark down there, I'm going to open up the ISO folder, click on this, and you will see your ISO, which has been created right here, which is the Phoenix PE uh, ISO. So let's go ahead and boot to this and we can take a look at it. And this is exactly what you can get straight out the box, pretty default a couple of little extra applications that I added to this, but I will go back and I'll show you and I'll add a few more programs and make change the wallpaper and make it your own. And this is exactly what people are going to want to do. It's pretty normal for it to boot up like this. You will need to change the boot order to boot to that uh, USB flash drive, but I've booted into a virtual machine here and booted to the ISO just to show you. This is all for your uh, network setup here, but I'm just going to leave this as is. And here we have our WinPE. It's pretty basic. We don't have vast amounts of applications on here, but what can you use this for? Well, if your PC is not booting or maybe you're locked out with a, a password that is set and you don't remember it, you can reset the password using something like Windows Login Unlocker, and this will unlock and remove the password. It can also do live IDs there, as you can see. And also we do have some other options you can scan for malware on the computer. Maybe the drive might be failing. You might want to check the drive or backup data, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to go back into the application one more time, make a bunch of application changes and add some more applications, change the wallpaper. And uh, they're all in the list there. You can see it's pretty straightforward stuff in the tweak section. You've got your wallpaper there. You can change, you can make a few tweaks. Once I've run the uh, build again, you can see I've now successfully made another build and I've added a few more applications in here. This is trial and error, but once you get it working, you should get a good few programs in here that you need. And you can see I've changed the wallpaper to my own uh, wallpaper 
and I'm now booting up back into the Wimpy E again one more time. And this will have a, a lot more applications that you can use to do data recovery using file recovery software, or maybe you want to back up data, or maybe you want to uh, run some checks on some drives or do some other repairs, run scans for malware, or whatever it is you want to do, you can do it via this uh, WinPE. So we've got the WinPE booted up now. All I need to do here is go into the start here, and now we can see we do have our applications here, and there's quite a few more applications. Again, you can add in whatever you like, and you can play around with it. But again, if you do get an error code, just remove that uh, program and try something else. But we do have ESET Online Scanner, which will allow us to run a scan. If your PC is not booting or it's full of malware, uh, you can boot up to a WinP environment like this and basically run a full scan on that computer and remove any malware that's on that PC before you boot into it. And because you're not booted into the desktop itself and you're booting up to a WinP environment, it's safe and you'll be able to remove all the malware from the computer. Again, you can do dynamic disk management here, partition management, uh, backups, things like that. So let's take a look at some of the applications that you can use here. And again, you can add in whatever you like for your particular build. So we've got our password resets here and we've also got some system tools here. You can check the system specifications of what is on that system without even booting into Windows, you'll boot into this WinPE. You've got advanced uh, IP scanning software here, and you've also got some other stuff in here. So I'll just go through some of these applications that I put on here. Backing up software, we've got that also here where with IOMI Backupper. From this environment, you can back up uh, to a NAS drive, or you can back up to an external drive if you PC doesn't boot and you want to get all your data off, you can use this method to back all your data up using that method. It's very simple and easy to do, and you should be creating a USB drive like this because if you get locked out of your PC with a password reset, it's real simple. You just boot up to this WinPE and you can basically reset your password. You've got test disk here for data recovery as well. This will allow you to do a data recovery on that drive. You also have other applications here which are quite useful as well. We've got Shadow Copy View. We've got uh, Photo Rec, which is another uh, data recovery software which are allowed to do data recovery on that drive as well. And we also have other software here which is quite useful. So let's go back here, like CPU-Z. So it'll tell us exactly what the CPU is on that PC. So if you're working on a PC, we've got SSD-Z as well. This will also tell you information because we're on a virtual machine, it's not going to give you any information there. But if you was on a real PC, it will give you all of the information of the SSD in there and whether it's failing and things like that. We also have other great programs like GPU-Z as well, which will tell you all about a GPU, what is in that system without taking the side panel off. We've also got AIDA64 here. We can do all sorts of stuff like benchmarking, uh, you know, stress testing and even get information about the computer here uh, as well. So it's quite useful to find out what is on the system, what motherboard is in there and things like that. So this tool is very useful if you need to uh, repair your computer or do some work on your computer. It's always handy to have one of these, create a USB flash drive, stick it in a drawer somewhere and you'll have some sort of toolkit that you can use to either reset passwords get your data off and things like that. It's very useful and it will save you in the long run from taking it to a PC repair shop and having them do that for you when you can do it yourself. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. If you want to see more on this sort of stuff, then let me know in the comments section below. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.